<laughs> there was no other movie that could have possibly made the number one spot. <laughs> I don't care if it's good. I don't care if it's bad. <laughs> That was before 2020. Like, I have to admit, Boils and Goals, there was really a point where I was super excited about Halloween Kills. Like, Halloween 2018 was the movie that, in a weird sort of way, kind of made me start talking about horror on this channel because it did remind me so much of the horror movies that I loved growing up. So when I heard that we were gonna get another sequel written by the same people, I was so dying to see it. And then we got an entire... <sighs> everything. <laughs> I will admit, I think that part of the reason why my enthusiasm for this movie died is that with the world shut down and with me still wanting to keep up to date with all the new horror movies that were coming out, I have to admit that this pandemic has sort of had this weird side effect of giving me more of an appreciation for indie horror movies. Like, I have to admit, movies like Fried Berry never would have been on my radar any other year than 2021. And I think that there's this other problem which is just that like the Hollywood film industry is really starting to exhaust me. <laughs> I'm gonna go on a really weird tangent for a little while and sort of explain in my weird roundabout thoughts about how I think Disney is responsible for killing my love of Halloween Kills. Hold with me for a second here. Like it wouldn't be really hard to figure out that I used to be a massive Disney fan. I have Mickey and Minnie tattooed behind my ears which by the way, I am kind of planning to get covered up because I don't really like the idea of having like a company logo on the side of my head, especially when my hair is short so often. I'm just not about it. I just really feel like Disney lately has been oversaturating the Hollywood market with just basically fluff. Controversial statement here, guys. I do not like the Marvel movies. There's nothing likable about the Marvel movies, which I don't know if it's still considered the biggest thing in movies these days because I don't know what's going on with the, uh, the world being shut down. But anyway, for the longest time, it seemed like that was the series that could just do absolutely no fault with the public. And yet I just, I'm not, I'm gonna be honest, I never understood it. And I do like superhero movies. Like Batman Returns is one of my all time favorite movies. Meow. But my problem with Marvel is that as much as it was fun, just kind of fluff, what, superheroes, attractive people, whatever. That's all that it really was for several movies and it didn't really progress beyond that at any point. It's just, oh, now we get another movie with another attractive lead who's gonna do more action-y stuff, but we're not gonna talk about anything. There's no development. And that's not to say that every single Marvel movie is bad. Like, personally, I really like the Guardians of the Galaxy series, especially Guardians of the Galaxy 2. But Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is sort of an outlier in Marvel because it actually does have a somewhat complicated theme that it's trying to explore. Lore. Yes, that theme is oversimplified through Kurt Russell's character, but Michael Rooker's character gives us a very interesting look into what happens when you're dealing with a very difficult relationship with a parent. And once that parent is gone, how do you contend with that? How do you deal with the memory of someone who both hurt you, but at the same time just wanted the best for you? And I know that people are gonna go to the comment section and they're gonna point out to me that other Marvel movies have tried to talk about things in the past. It's just never felt like like it's actually broaching the subject. It's just the way that Disney talks about everything. It's so surface level and simplified. Like look at Thanos. I feel like everyone talks about Thanos as being like this really cool villain that's super well thought out and whatever. But the conflict that the movies are trying to give us is, is it morally justified to just commit genocide in order to deal with overpopulation? And if there's anyone out there who actually thinks that the answer to that is maybe, I don't know what to, uh, uh? Like the dude literally kidnaps children from the colonies that he has massacred and then tortures them into adulthood until they become assassins. How is this a morally gray character, you guys? But I would be 
fine with that if it wasn't for the fact that that was every movie that we seem to be getting nowadays. Look at the other movies that Disney's releasing. What has Star Wars done that's interesting since before the prequels? All of those live action remakes are pretty much the same thing that we were getting in the 90s except more bland, huh? The deepest thing that DC has said in the last how many years is we live in a society. Like, I'm sorry, it sounds like I'm being really anti-fluff and considering my entire channel is a horror channel, someone please call me out on that. <laughs> like, I am totally in support for just turning your mind off and enjoying a movie for a little while. It's just that that can't be the only movie that we keep getting. And now let's move away from just general Hollywood and talk about horror movies. I don't feel like this is the right time for another slasher sequel, you guys. Slasher movies definitely can say something deep and slasher sequels definitely can say something deep. But the point is the majority of slasher sequels are just kind of fluff that you turn your mind off to. You get some attractive people, you get some gore, that's all it is. And that's fine, that's fun, but I feel like I've seen that a lot lately. Michael Myers in particular has been especially bad for this in his sequels. Let's admit it, the majority of the Halloween sequels are really, really, really fluff. But I don't know, maybe I'm being sort of unfair at the same time because I know that this is a very stressful time for a lot of people. Maybe we do just need a movie to just turn our minds off and enjoy. And at the same time, maybe I'm being super judgmental because I haven't actually watched this trailer yet and maybe I should just shut up and watch it. No, 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 no. So we're starting on the fire from uh, the ending of 2018. Come on, we all know that uh, that's not happening, Jamie. Please don't tell me that he's about to crush the larynx of that guy and then dress him up in his outfit. Why didn't paramedics say something? His larynx had been crushed. Because I don't think I can handle that level of stupid all over again. That's actually pretty cool. Damn. <laughs> My grandmother was right. The boogeyman was real. It's over. We can't hurt anyone ever again. No one told you. Told me what? Am I the only one that finds Judy Greer the more forgettable of all of uh, Laurie Strode's children? I don't know, there's just something boring about her. I, I know I said that I liked Halloween 2018 better than all the other sequels, but man, there's something non-memorable about this character. Somebody in there? Michael Myers is alive. Of course he is, he always is. <laughs> You had a knife in your stomach. You and Allison should not have to keep running. Evil dies tonight. I'm not just going to sit and watch another innocent person die. If you track Michael's victim. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Nice callback there. The masks from uh, Halloween 3. That's a nice callback. Ooh, they have all the masks actually. Nice. What do we do? We fight. Let's hunt him down. Michael Myers is flesh and blood. But a man couldn't have survived that fire. They're going for an almost supernatural angle with Michael Myers this time around. Which is interesting. I know that John Carpenter has always stood by this idea of Michael Myers being just a pure physical embodiment of this idea of evil. But I don't know, well besides the really bad Cult of Thorns plotline, I don't know if they've really touched on Michael Myers being supernatural outside of that. Which we're not even going to talk about the Cult of Thorns plotline because it's stupid and it doesn't make sense. And 
just erase it from your mind. Garbage. You know whose baby it is, don't you? Michael! The baby is yours, isn't it? Isn't it, Michael? But this is getting even more supernatural, it seems. Almost like they're turning Michael Myers into an actual demon or something like that. I don't think that they'll go that that direct of a route where they'll actually confirm what he is because I think that would piss off way too many fans. But at the same time, that's it's an interesting approach and not one that we've seen before in this franchise, I guess. It's, I don't know if it's just, it's just not new enough, I guess. I still, I still need to see more. I still, I'm still not convinced. The more he kills, the more he transcends. Run! Go home now! He's the essence of evil. <laughs> nice music stand there. I'm coming for you, Michael. The girls look very badass. I cannot complain about that. Yeah, I kind of just kind of feel the same way coming out as I did going in. The girls look badass. Michael Myers looks brutal. It's gonna be gory. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fluff. It's just another Hollywood franchise horror slasher sequel. Maybe I'm being too harsh on this. I know that some of you in my audience have actually gotten an opportunity to see this movie early, and if you have any opinions, please let me know. If you have any opinions based solely off the trailer, please let me know. I will definitely watch it. I will probably be entertained. I just don't see myself having that a big of an opinion on it this time around. <sighs> to realize how my youth has slipped away. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching my pets and I will see you next time. Love you. <laughs> Trick or treat, motherfucker. Although donating to my Patreon is unnecessary, it is hugely appreciated. As little as $3 a month could help me put out many more videos. On that note, I'd like to thank Wilson L. Ricks III, Scott Falks, Andre K., and Thrill House. Thank you so much for your support. It means the world to me. I can't wait to see you all next time.